Okay, what we're going to do here is talk about a couple different types of bonds, and this is for an intro to corporate finance course. So this is just going to be an overview, right? Uh, I kind of hesitate to do to do this because I teach in financial institutions. I teach about a lot of different types of bonds, and, and I'm leaving a lot out here, in other words. But I just want to give you a brief overview of the types of bonds that are out there. And the, and the reason being is I want you to see, remember we define bonds as, as, as just a promise, right? They're a promise to repay according to some structure. You can write whatever you want into that promise, into that structure. So I want to talk a little bit about, uh, about um, the different types of you know, sort of promises we can make to repay. Uh, and again, this is interesting because remember equity. Remember you know, the, when we first defined equity, equity is defined as a residual claim, right? So uh, this is, you know, you know, if I buy Tesla stock, you buy Tesla stock, this is the, this is the same thing. There's, there, uh, we just take the, the residual income uh, of the firm, right, the res residual cash flows, and divide them up by the number of shares, and that's what you get. So, so whereas equity, equity is a very simple sort of security, it's ownership and a residual claim, um, because this is just a contract, a contractual promise to repay according to some structure, these can be quite varied, right? So, uh, so let's briefly go through a couple types of bonds, right? A big category is going to be government bonds, uh, treasury bonds, these are going to be uh, fixed uh, fixed coupon, like a, you know, just a regular ten-year treasury note with a five percent coupon. Uh, these, these are these are interesting. They uh, a little bit about you know semi-annual thousand-dollar uh, par value. Uh, they're uh, interesting thing is they're exempt from state taxes, but not from federal taxes, right? So they have a, a unique tax status. Uh, so, and then what we often do, what we talked a little bit about before is treasury, you know, I'll put under here, uh, primary dealers take these treasuries and strip them up into zero coupon bonds. So while the government doesn't issue zeros, except bills, treasury bills are zeros, but greater than one year, the U U.S. government doesn't issue uh, zeros, uh, primary dealers will take the treasury uh, notes and bonds and create zero coupons with them. We also have other... You know, uh, under the, you're talking about the U.S. government here, we have Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. Uh, where these, the actual rate doesn't fluctuate, but the principal fluctuates with inflation. So uh, the idea is, is the, your, the payment, the coupon payment you will receive uh, varies depending on inflation because the principal is fluctuating around. The coupon stays the same, but the principal fluctuates. Uh, and the, these can be used to, to back out the real rate, so we can get an idea of what the real rate is here. Uh, we also, is going staying at the federal government level, there are some floating rates, some true where the rate floats. The, I think these are like series E saving bonds, inconsequential. Um, so that's fine. But a, a big thing here is municipal. So we also have municipal bonds. These are issued by state and local governments. They have a very preferential tax status. Um, uh, it, it because, you know, so long as you buy them, so they can be exempt from state and federal, as long as you buy them, if, if I'm, I'm in New York, so if I buy a New York municipal, keep in mind, you lose the preferential tax status at the state level if you buy uh, a, a, a Texas municipal and I'm in New York, right? Uh, so, uh, but they have very, uh, can have a very preferential tax status because it, they're tax status dependent. Think about the implication of that. How many European investors do you think buy New York municipal bonds? Well, they don't get the, uh, I would buy them at a lower yield because I get a preference, you know, again, we only care about after-tax yield because I get a better, uh, uh, I get a preferential tax treatment. But would a, would a, would a French investor buy these? Because uh, they don't get that better tax treatment, and, but it has a lower yield. So, so no, these tend to be bought by uh, investors in that state. So given how I've just explained this tax structure, you can see who, you know, who, who's the owner of these things. Um, municipal bonds, they can be like general obligation or they can be backed by a particular road or a particular project and so forth. Uh, but munis are very interesting. Going over to corporate bonds, right? Here we have a lot of, we have a lot of uh, different ways that we can organize the structure of our payment. So for example, I'll start with the two kind of bottom here. An income bond would say, you know, I can only, I'll, I'll only pay interest on this bond if I have positive net income, right? Which kind of makes it like a quasi-equity type security. You can also have payment in kind notes. You know, uh, These would say, I'll pay you in cash or I'll pay you in, I can pay, the company, can, you know, I as the company can pay you in cash or I can pay you in additional bonds. Um, uh, we can also have convertibles, right? I wrote a short convert here, but convertible bonds. So these, you know, it's a bond that pays a, a particular uh, a coupon rate, but uh, if you would like, you can convert it to this number of shares of stock, right? So, so this is, again, kind of like, you know, you have equity exposure here. 
Uh, so it's kind of kind of like a bond in a, in a call option, but the but the but the uh, the bond kill like if you convert it, right, you no longer have the bond. Uh, so th these are interesting. They tend to, you know, what's going on here is the convertible will tend to have a lower yield than a than a than a, than a corporate bond without the convertible feature. So it's a way to to get a lower yield uh, by giving the bondholder some equity exposure. Then we have callable and puttable. Callable is really uh, common. Callable, uh, if you buy a callable bond, and this is where you know we, we start talking about options. If you buy a callable bond, you're buying the bond and writing an option on that bond at the same time. So what a callable bond does is it allows the company, if they would like, to buy the bond back from you. And there's different types of call features. Maybe they can buy it back for you for just 1,100, uh, but there's make whole calls where it'll be a market determined rate. Uh, but the idea is, let's just say they can buy it back anytime they want uh, at uh, 1,100. So that you know, basically, you're buying the bond, but you're giving the the, the the company the option to buy it at 1,100. So you're writing the call, right? so it's like a covered call. Uh, and uh, if you've taken investments, uh, uh, and then puttable allows you to, to put the bond back to the company. Uh, Talking about just another couple, you know, type of bonds here that are really interesting. I always bring up uh, catastrophe. So you, you see here, we already we're already talking about it's a it's a bond and an option. So we have like this kind of derivative um, added into to the bond. Catastrophe bonds are are uh, bonds where you know I'll issue this catastrophe bond. I'll pay interest. Uh, you know, I'll just it has a coupon rate, so I'll pay this interest and I'll pay principal unless. You know, uh, three hurricanes hit Miami in the next uh, five years, and then I won't. I'll make no further payments, and I will. I will give you back your principal. So the idea of this, these are issued by. So the payment is dependent on hurricanes hitting Miami, or the payment could be dependent on snowfall in Boston, or um, you know some function of the wind out uh, in the plains, or something like that. Um, so the idea of these are. Um, Cat bonds are often sold by insurance companies. So the idea here is, if there's a, if there's a hurricane hits Miami, there could be a lot of damage. So I'll, I'll you know, I don't have to pay these bonds back, and I'll use that money to to pay out the uh, claims. So often, you know, sold by insurance companies. Now we've just been talking about the U.S. here, but we also have things called we have a lot of international bond markets. So we have bonds that are like euro bonds. What a euro bond is, is if I'm a company, I might sell yen denominated bonds in Australia, right? So I'm selling them, I'm a US company, I'm selling the bonds in Australia, but they're not denominated in Australian dollars, they're denominated in, uh, in Japanese yen. Uh, and that would be termed a euro bond. No, Europe is not involved in there, but it's just called a euro bond. Euro bond, I, you know, one thing I haven't talked about here, particularly in corporate bonds, there's also, you know, in different bonds, there's different security, meaning different collateral. Some are, have collateral, some don't have collateral. If they don't have collateral, they're, uh, they're a debenture. Uh, there can be different places in the capital structure. They can be senior, they can be subordinated. Um, so euro bonds, a lot of euro bonds generally have, tend to have the, uh, you know, similar features. They generally don't have collateral, no security, uh, uh, and stuff like that. Um, I have foreign bonds because if it was like, a, uh, if, it was, if I'm a US company issuing a Australian dollar denominated bond in Australia, that would be a foreign bond. Uh, then we can also link our bonds to uh, price of oil, price of natural gas. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, my interest, my, my, uh, we can have a floating rate, and the, the rate floats along with some, you know, uh, some uh, uh, bond, I mean, some uh, oil price index or something like that. So, so I hope this, you know, so I'm going to end it there, but the idea is I hope this gives you uh, an idea of, of just the, the sort of varied, uh, bond, you know, types of uh, bonds that are out there. If you have an interest in bonds, again, bond markets are large, uh, uh, absolutely huge, can be uh, on any given when you aggregate them all together, bigger than stock markets. If you're interested in bonds, I had, I was just looking here to see if I brought the book in, but there's a great book, the one that I learned, you know, a lot about bonds, and it's Fabazi's uh, Handbook of Fixed Income Securities. Uh, you know, I can always put a link to it to the to Amazon. But if you're interested in this, I definitely encourage you to, to pick up uh, Fabazi's handbook of fixed income securities. I haven't even talked about sort of securitization and collateralized debt obligations and anything like that. Um, but we also have bonds backed by mortgages and auto loans and credit card receivables and uh, and so forth. So there's just a lot out there. So if you're interested in this, pick up a used copy or, or new of uh, Fabazi's book. Um, have a great day.